You're listening to the Hey Sis podcast. This is a space for millennial women to breathe and then go out into the world and lead. Now, here's your host, Dr. D. Evans. Hey, 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 y'all. This is the Hey Sis podcast. I'm so glad that you're listening today. I am your host, Dr. D. Evans, and in today's episode, we will be discussing vain imaginations. That comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 through 6. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the kingdom of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It is definitely easier said than done. <laughs> Taking captive every thought is much easier said than done. Oh my God. Vain imaginations come through our minds and they present all sorts of worst case scenarios. I mean, vain imaginations are the worrisome thoughts, sis. It's the, am I going to get married? How are my children going to look? Can I afford to get married? At this point for the single sisters, it's not just, am I going to get a husband? It's, can my husband afford, afford me? Can I afford to get divorced? Like before we think about the marriage, can I afford my wedding and can I afford to get divorced? Like those are vain imaginations. <laughs> They're worrisome and anxious pictures in our mind. The enemy wants to have a playground in your mind. The enemy wants to use your imaginations to present to you this phrase. What if, what if it doesn't work out? What if I didn't hear God? What if I'm never really going to truly be happy? What if I was never supposed to move here? Those what ifs can kill your faith. It can drown out the voice of God if you're not careful. Those what ifs, those statements that you think to yourself when you're alone that you know aren't God, but you entertain them. That's what that means, taking taking captive of every thought. That phrase, what if, and also the phrase, I should have. I should have been nicer. I should have done this, right? I should have done this sooner. I should have listened to my mother. I should have listened to my father. Though That's a great phrase to start retrospect, but when you are alone and you are grieving a person, a place in, a, a place in, what is happening to me? A person, a place, or a thing, that phrase, I should have, can definitely lead you down a spiral that you don't need to go down. The enemy loves bringing up scenarios, making you replay the worst moments of your life, or even fantasize about a moment that you haven't even had yet and coming up with a death-based scenario based on what? A vain imagination. The enemy places these thoughts in our minds in hopes that we'll agree with the lie. The enemy wants you to agree with his lies. He wants you to believe these pictures that he's outlined for your life. He wants you to come into agreement with it. Once you agree with the lie, you will begin to believe it and act as if what the enemy has shown you in your imagination will really happen. If he can get you to believe the what if, then you will manifest it. Completely new age. That's what that manifestation mess is. I'm just going to manifest my way into a new car. Whether you call it the law of attraction or not, manifesting anything without the will of God being present, without consulting the father is witchcraft. It's not just, I'm going to think it and put it in the universe. You're going to think what and put it in the universe. So you just think you're going to bypass God and you're going to talk to his creation. It's going to come back to you. Them demons are waiting. <laughs> Them spirits are waiting like, Ooh, what this? Oh, I can see how I can destroy your life with this. Because think about what's so popular in TV right now, like sex in the city. Some of these TV shows I'm watching, they're really emphasizing with these character plots, these actors saying, oh, I put it out in the universe, but the universe isn't God. 
And so now you're playing into this idea that we are in control of our lives. And in actuality, we are all sheep led to the slaughter, to be honest with you. Without a God, we are stupid. We are dumb. But these thoughts of, oh, I can just put it in the universe and it's going to come back to me. Well, you can definitely put things out in the quote unquote universe. You can speak things into existence. But if you are not subject to the power of Jesus Christ, if you are not asking God for the direction for your life, a lot of things can happen for you. Look at unbelievers. But is it in the will of God? You speaking things into the universe and hoping it comes back to you is very synonymous with forms of idolatry because you. It's you that you're speaking into. It's not the Holy Spirit and you saying, oh God, I come in agreement with what you're telling me. You're telling the universe, come into agreement with what I want. But what if what you want is in God's will? That's the danger with believing these lies of the enemy. The lies aren't supposed to leave you, lead you, excuse me, to the truth. The devil is not placing vain imaginations in your mind to help you. The devil is not a deliverer. The devil is not trying to aid you to get to your purpose. The devil is going to try everything he can to deter you and to delay you. That's his assignment. Steal, time, kill, you, destroy. That's what he does. It's endless cycles of it. It's your responsibility as a believer to take captive those thoughts, to realize when you're having it. And guess what? You won't always realize what a vain imagination is if you don't have accountability. So... Living in this state of constantly thinking about the what ifs or the I should have, should haves, it causes great emotional turmoil. And any trauma or emotional crisis in our past can be access points for the enemy to plant these seeds of vain imagination in our minds. If we don't renew our minds with the word of God, if we don't have accountability, if you're not reading the word of the Lord, but you are reading CNN, that is your Bible. That's what you're feeding your spirit with. But you have to wash yourself with the word. You have to bathe yourself in the word. You have to regurgitate the word of the Lord, not just the prophecies, but the word of the Lord scripture, which is holy. We have to bathe ourselves in it. Why? Because we are susceptible to believing the lies of the enemy. Like I said, we are sheep and we are dumb. I can set my mind to do something and two weeks later I fall off. Not because my heart doesn't want to do it, because I'm a sheep and I'm dumb. And I constantly want to, I need to be reminded. I'm constantly influenced by outside sources and it takes the Holy Spirit to bring my mind into subjection. Don't get it twisted. I love the Lord. I know what I'm anointed and called to do, but I have to make sure I'm in alignment so that my body, my spirit, my will um, is able to come under subjection of what the Lord wants from me. It's not natural for me to be obedient to God. My flesh wants what it wants. My flesh has resurrection power and so does yours. It takes dedication. It takes discipline. It takes prayer. It takes meditation. It takes accountability for me to cast down vain, vain imaginations, for me to tell my flesh no when it is screaming yes. It is not natural for me not to fall in sin. It's something I have to be intentional about. It is the same for you. And if you have unhealed past, including damaging and destructive memories, it can cause an opening for the enemy to plant these vain imaginations in your mind. It causes doubt, not just in yourself, in your own abilities, but in God's ability to be who he is to you. Those mental pictures that form in your mind when you start seeing fears and you start visualizing the worries, it can summon terror, depression, discouragement, stress, anxiety. All of these originate from the enemy, from the accuser of the brethren. You are never going to see an angel of the Lord called doubt. Hear ye, hear ye, Mary, I am doubt. No, that's just not going to happen. These things come from the enemy, from the accuser. If you choose to hold on to the image of abuse that the enemy wants to present you with every day, you're going to live in a constant state of unrest and emotional instability. If you choose to hold on to that church hurt that the enemy wants to present to you daily and you keep going over it, oh, 
over in your mind over and over and over again. You're going to be mentally unstable. If you choose to wallow about the divorce, if you choose to keep harping on what your boss said to you, if you choose to keep talking about how your child's not talking to you, if you choose to keep talking about money and how you don't have enough, this, this place of what if, this place of I should have, you will not be able to live an abundant life. Life is already hard. I don't want to survive it. I want to live. And this Christian life is not all about what we do on earth. We're living to live again. But the main imaginations, if you don't bring them in, you will literally forget that there's more to this world than this life. There's more to your life than this world, actually. That's what I meant to say. We are living to go to a place where there's no crying, no dying. There is no politics. God is sovereign. No one's going to be accusing him in heaven. And we don't preach this anymore. We preach about what's coming next, what God is going to do. My peace in the next season, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut off this person. In heaven, we won't have any of those issues. We long for that day. We long for the new Jerusalem. And while we're on the path to being prepared for when that day comes, we don't have to be completely in torment. But that's what the devil loves. His friends are depression. They're his sons. Sons of the devil. Depression, anxiety, torment. He loves his children. And he loves setting his children loose on us. Thanks be to God that he is a good, good father. And he has given you power through the power of the Holy Spirit to combat these vain imaginations. So you overcome these vain imaginations by asking yourself, is that thought or image from God? If you don't know, you begin to ask yourself questions. Did, did I feel peace when I thought of this person? Why do I keep bringing this back up? Why is this in my heart and in my spirit? I've learned that when the Lord keeps putting things in my spirit, I need to ask him about it. Sometimes it's not like the Lord, the Lord put you on my heart. No, the Lord is trying to address a root that's in my heart and he wants me to talk about it and not leave it in my subconscious. The Lord wants me to surrender my feelings towards this person or my feelings towards an issue so that the enemy won't have room to put these pictures of vain imaginations in my head. If you ever answer no to those self-reflection questions, do not agree with the enemy. We break agreement with the enemy. I've begun to do that in prayer a lot. I break all ties and agreements I've made with the enemy concerning my life. I break all ties. All agreements that I've made without even knowing, I break them off. The enemy has no legal right. And it, when you get those pictures that are vain imaginations, just do it quickly. There's no problem with just saying out of your mouth, the devil's a liar. I break all agreement with the enemy. That does not belong to me. It's okay if you look crazy. This isn't about a popularity contest. This is not about your Facebook profile. This is not about you needing a publicist to say these things. This is about your spiritual life. And let me tell you something. My mind is worth more than how people view me. That's where I'm at in my life. And so if someone says something crazy near me and it triggers me for a vain imagination or someone says something and it erupts a picture or an image inside of me that I know does not come from God, I will bind it and them in the moment. I break all ties. I break all agreements. Why? Because I know what it's like to live in a vain imagination and I don't want to go back. There's like this little song on... Instagram, I want to go home. Well, I, I, yeah, I want to go home. I don't want to go back there. Okay? I can't have it. That's not for me. I'm not here for it. Send me outside with them little girls from Frozen. I'd rather build a snowman than go back to the place where I was in, where I was living with vain imaginations. That's not cute. It took me a moment longer than a moment, okay, to realize that the big bat wolf that was blowing outside of my door was a puppy. And honey, when the Lord came through for me and delivered me, honey, ripped me out the plastic. I was brand new, okay? You must, 
This is not a kind suggestion. As a believer, you must reject the lies of the of the enemy. Do it immediately and then and then get disciplined in it. And find scriptures, not that support your flesh, but that convict it. Begin to remember right scripture that helps you believe what God said concerning you. If God told you you were going to move to South Africa and you can't even afford to move down the street, you better start decreeing God is not a man that he should lie. Period. If the Lord said, I'm going to be this and that, and I look at my current situation and I say, Lord, ain't no way. First thing I'm going to do is, oh, Lord, I, I don't have a scripture, but um, there's a song that says he made a way when my back was against the wall and it looked like it was over. I'll start singing it loudly. You made a, And I'm standing here because you made a way. And not only that, you're going to continue to make ways. Then I'm going to go to my Bible. I'm going to start researching, okay, scriptures about God making a way. Okay, Lord, you make rivers in the desert. Oh, God, thank you. I will memorize that scripture and commit it to my heart, commit it to my mind, because that's going to keep that vain Im- imagination from feeling comfortable in my spirit, man, feeling comfortable in my mind. Break down them strongholds. The enemy love forming a stronghold in the mind, especially concerning a false image, because it wants you to begin and think and act like the lie. You were not made in the image of a lie of the enemy. You were made in the image of God and you will reflect his goodness and his glory. I also have to mention to you that the accuser of the brethren, Lucifer, is a master of deception. So he can present you with thoughts and feelings that seem so real. I use the example, if God told you you were moving to South Africa, but you can't move two blocks over, your faith don't have nothing to do with what God said. God doesn't need your faith to do what he said. I know that's not good theology for some of y'all, but it is the truth. He doesn't need you to comply with what he said. When he says a thing, it cannot be reversed. But what can happen is you can fake yourself out. By allowing the enemy to come in and deceive you. I'm never going to get to South Africa. Well, you're not going to get there feeling sorry for yourself. You better decree the word of the Lord. You better begin to look for look for options. Begin to ask God, how do I discipline my mind and my money? Lord, you said this is where I'm going. God, put me in the right path for righteousness sake. How many times do I need to fast? Who do I need to talk to? Do I know somebody from South Africa? Is it going to be this year, oh Lord, in your timing? You've got to start leaning into the Father. You've got to build a relationship. Yes, with God. A relationship with God and not the devil doubts, a relationship with God and not one with deception and doubt. Break up with all of that. You have to form a relationship with the father. Why? He don't lie. He's consistent. He's always on the main line. Uh, (laughs) J-E-S-U-S-U. I'm talking about a YouTube video, y'all. This lady was like, Jesus on the main line, something like that. And the second verse was like, J. No, 1-800-J-S-U-S. I said, huh? I ain't never heard that be sung. But I tell you what, I'm going to sing it. Don't put me in the church of devotion, honey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break out with that song. 1-800-J-S-U-S. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Nevertheless, you better call on them. In the morning, in the evening, in the noonday. Glory, I feel a little churchy in here. But I'm saying... You have to have a relationship with the father and break up them other relationships that you have with deception and all this other stuff. They're terrible relationships. They're one-sided. They don't give you nothing. Doubt don't pay no, not one bill, not one. Okay. And even begin to guard your gates. I've been talking about that in my blogs at the dfvents.com. You should go there. That was definitely a shameless plug. I'll say it again. www.thedfvents.com. I've been writing about guarding your gates and the snares of the fowler. And 
guarding your gates is very important to limiting the hold that Bane imaginations may have over you. Like, even when you continue to watch negative news reports or read them, you can have difficulty looking at all those pictures and feeling hope for our nation and desiring hope for your nation. I know I got some internationals on here. What's up? But in those moments, when you see those pictures of wars or rumors of, of wars, begin to decree the word of the Lord. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Oh Lord, can, would you begin to end this? Oh Lord, would you silence the voice of the accuser? Oh Lord, you are the one that opposes this violence. You are the one, oh God, begin to decree and intercede. And that's how you, you drown out the voice of the accuser. That's how you get those vain imaginations out of your head and you come into agreement with what God has for you and who you're interceding for. It's also important, people, who you're talking to. The enemy can use anyone to deliver his messages to you. Did you hear what I just said? Turn me up in the monitors. The enemy can use anyone to deliver his images and his messages to you. Guard your mind from negative reports on television. Guard your mind. From this stuff on the internet and other people. Honey, I'm on threads on Instagram. I already had to take a break. I said, ooh, Jesus, help Lord. Because you have to know your triggers. Guard your mind. Guard your soul. Guard your spirit. Guard your gates. Listen, you owe it to God to be free. What we going to let Jesus' blood be shed for and we taking advantage of it? And we're not applying this blood. We're not applying the disciplines. We're not applying the teachings. Did Jesus die in vain for us to be out here just wandering around looking silly, entertaining wolves? It cannot be so. That's not why he died. Jesus did not die for me to be crazy. <laughs> Jesus did not die for me to have conversations with the devil willingly. Sorry, I just don't believe it. I just, I just don't. Jesus died so that we may have life to the tree of life. That we may be able to have life that is more abundantly given on earth as it is in heaven. He gave us the right to an abundant life. And I stand on that. And I do not believe we have to give the enemy room. I do not believe that we have to allow him to invade our spaces in our mind just because he wants someone to play with vain imaginations they come to paralyze you they come to steal your peace but peace comes as a byproduct of time spent with spent with God in his presence and allowing the word of God to choke out the lies of the enemy so remember a lot of times the images we receive from the enemy, the anxiety, the thoughts, the smells that we, we, we that we sense. Some of y'all have that spiritual gift of discernment where you smell. Um, they may seem real, but when you're grounded in God's word, you will recognize the deception immediately. So my prayer for you is that you acquire the discipline to discern what is a vain imagination and what is a prophecy? What is a lie from the enemy and what is a glimpse into your future? I guarantee you when God gives you little snippets, little trailers of what is coming, it will give you peace, not anxiety. I pray that even as you listen to this podcast, that this fills you with peace. Not anxiety, not worry, not condemnation, but it fuels your soul to cast out even more vain imaginations so that you can see what God has been saying about you all along and so that you can shut up what the devil wants you to believe about yourself. Thank y'all for listening to the Hey Sis podcast. I do want to thank you for listening again. Head over to the website, thedevans.com. I would love to hear from you. There's so many articles there. Um, I've categorized everything for you. I thank God for this community. I thank God for you. And um, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. 
Thanks for joining us this week on the Hey Sis podcast. Check out www.thedevans.com for more blogs and motivation.